Are Manchester City in crisis? No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word crisis. When you think of Manchester City, you probably picture the last three successive Premier League titles, their first Champions League title, or even their overall football dominance. For the best part of recent history, that was all that what Man City was known for. However, the last five weeks have proven otherwise. Some describe it as a crisis, but City have gone into a shocking run of form, losing the last five straight matches. For reference, they haven't been this bad since April of 2006. But the question remains, why? What is the truth about what is going on at Man City? Well, I'll be covering it all in this video. And before I get started, I want to make it clear that I filmed this video before they drew Feyenoord. So yeah, Man City have conceded 14 goals in the last five matches and allowing two of some lesser opposition, we'll say, to score four goals against them. There could be a million reasons for this. Maybe they're just having an off day two days in a row, or they're just struggling to gel as a team with the introduction of new signings. But if you were watching Man City versus Spurs, which is inherently not a lot of people, but I think you would have noticed a few things. Team was giving way too much space in the midfield. The team looked sloppy in their duels, sloppy in their passing, and generally just didn't have any guys in that match. In this season, they've been allowing way too many goals from counterattacks compared to the past years, and Pep Guardiola is slowly losing his grip on the dressing room. It's 95 minutes, 95 minutes. 95 minutes, 95 minutes. The point is that these habits and performances don't just come from one-off mistakes or a bad game, but instead the last couple matches have proven there's something wrong, and that goes a lot deeper. Because everybody's a bit down about the, the five losses. Some of their best players, their crown jewels, have been playing like League 2 players this season. In terms of front of goal, he's best in the world but for his general player for such a player it is so poor he has to improve that he's almost like a league two player i'm specifically talking about erling holland for a man that scored 38 goals last season and won the golden boot you would expect for him to be in some more consistent form the last time he scored in the prem was against brighton at the beginning of the month but he has 12 goals in the league i will give him credit for scoring 10 of city's first 13 league goals back-to-back -back hat tricks and a brace following the last that's pretty crazy but that run ended against arsenal which i'll talk more about later however since then he has been spotty hardly scoring any goals at all anymore but in all fairness that is the case right now with almost the entire team Sit down! Nobody talk! Sit down! So in a time when the squad as a whole struggles to put any in the back of the net, Holland, who is the striker after all, becomes kind of a scapegoat for the media and will take in a lot of criticism. I mean, it is his job to score goals, and he's proved before that he's pretty good at it. I'm not sure if it's the pressure getting to him, or simply a bump in the road you could say, because he has scored almost 30 plus goals for the last four seasons, so it is what it is with Holland. He's going through a tough time. However, I don't quite think the same could be said for Phil Foden. One of the best players in the squad, he won the PFA Player of the Year award last season, which is a pretty big deal. Considering so far this season, there's a fat donut next to how many goals he scored. Mmm, donut. Pep withheld him at the start of the season from playing any matches because he wanted him to make sure he was in the correct frame of mind, so to speak. And I don't think he is quite there yet. It seemed in his last couple of matches, he has been a stand-up performer albeit the level isn't too high right now in the City team. It is evident that he has not been as decisive as he was last season, at a time when City are lacking in goals. That is always going to be missed. Their most reliable players aren't scoring, but they cannot distract from the fact that the team is missing a huge piece of the puzzle. Of course, I'm talking about Rodri. Rodri was the foundation of this team, and ever since that match against Arsenal, as I mentioned earlier, he has been out of the season with a torn ACL. I did in fact make a video talking about the possible implications of his absence, but I don't think anyone could have predicted how bad it was really going to get. He served as the team anchor, basically holding the midfield together. His job was simple, but incredibly important. Dictating the speed of play throughout the entire match and picking out those passes only he could see is something completely unique to him. Not to mention, he could bang in a few goals when you needed one. His role on both sides of the ball was irreplaceable. After all, he did in fact win a Ballon d'Or, so naturally, his absence is very, very obvious, especially with whom they have replaced him with. And before I get to the next part of the video, I please ask you to do me one favor. Go down below and hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out in growing the channel and I can make more videos like this. Thank you. Let's get back to the video. At first, it was Kovacic who had to pick up the slack. To be nice, it was interesting. He's very good in small spaces, accomplished on the ball, great under pressure, and wins a lot of loose balls. I remember him playing at Chelsea, and he was fantastic. But the gaps between his level and Rodri's do get exposed by opposing teams, who can still work their way around him on a couple of occasions, or pick off his passes, which are a little more risky than the Spaniards. An element of Rodri's game was that he always played it safe no matter what. Kovacic is not a bad player by any means, but clearly not at the level of a Ballon d'Or winner. The next best fix was new signing Mateus Nunez, and that didn't last long. However, they would have one saving 
Amazing Grace, and sort of a fix for the Rodgers situation in the form of Ilkay Gundogan. He returned from Barcelona this season and has had to take on the responsibility of Rodgers' role that he left behind. As Akula last season, he actually played super well, like can change the result of a game super well. I'm not going to deny that the task he has been handed at City is way too much for him, but at 34 years old, he is as vulnerable as anyone else would be in the situation and hasn't been the very best either. So the only real options they have at the moment is either to thug it out and just adapt to the new CDMs or to sign a new one in the January transfer window. Some news outlets are speculating Adam Wharton, who is, who is a pretty young English CDM for Crystal Palace. If you ask me, I don't think he'll adapt well, but that's just talk for another video. So if it's not Pep's tactics, let's be honest, he's still one of the top three managers in the world. What is causing the entire team, including Holland and Foden, to underperform at such drastic levels? Well, after that same match where Rodri nuked his ACL, there was an obvious scuffle after full time where Holland would say an iconic line. It's ironic Holland told Arsenal to stay humble because they had nothing to be humble about. That's the joke. This clip doesn't even show the other shenanigans pulled earlier in the match. This is a prime example and the crown moment of the arrogance Man City has developed as a result of their winning ways. And what comes with winning all the time is complacency. The crown moment of their complacency came against their match versus Feyenoord in the Champions League just recently. Man City were up 3-0, Holland scoring a brace and Gundogan scoring this incredible goal. But in the late stages of the second half, they completely blew their 3-0 lead. Now this is extremely unlike of City. So what actually happened? Well, this is some of the worst defending I think I've ever seen. That's a little bit short. And the second goal, I will give them a little bit of slack on. I don't even know what really happened here. The ball is just bouncing around. So fair enough. The second goal just showed how complacent they're really getting. First, they let the guy get in behind. Second, they not only let him run through the defense, but they forget to mark the man at the back post, and he slots in an easy goal. It is hard to perform at a top level and win years and years in a row without stepping off the gas and letting off just a little bit. And when you let off a little bit, that's when teams overtake you. And it seems we're in that period right now. The mindset at the club of, we are the best and we should be winning is starting to nip them in the butt. They are simply not trying to improve anymore because how good could you really get? It is understandable they have built up this attitude in the club where they have all this money and practically bought their way into having an exceptional team. Another reason might be the battle they are fighting against the FFP laws right now. Pep has signed a new two year deal with Manchester City. A nice message to say that the club sees Pep in their future, but this could also be a death sentence for his career. If Man City are found guilty of the charges, they are accused of all 400 of some counts, there is no doubt they will be in the championship next year or the one after. What? No, 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 So it's quite possible that the pressure to gather as many points as possible in order to absorb the harsh deduction might be the cause. But it's hard to say what the truth about what well, the terrible form of this team is right now. But if you ask me, it's a mix of everything I talked about. From the injuries and the arrogance of the team to just the general underperformance of their best players, there's a lot for them to figure out and hopefully it doesn't trickle into their league performances or else Arsenal or even Liverpool might win the league. And I'll tell you, nobody wants that to happen. Anyways, that's all I got today and I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.